Awesome. So today we really came up with five main areas that we found would be useful to our clients and uh, also some people, business partners and internal IBMers. Uh, first, we're going to talk a little bit about IBM's automation strategy. So what IBM has done um, from a str strategic perspective uh, in our automation portfolio, since it is a core pillar of our business. Uh, second, we're going to little, talk a little bit about the cloud pack for business automation. So what it is, what it does, how to deploy it. Uh, we'll go through all of that. Third, we're going to do a deep dive into deployment options. So very common question we get is how to deploy the cloud pack. I know it says cloud in the name, but that doesn't necessarily mean you have to. Uh, and we'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, third, we're going to go into the RPA and workflow demonstration. So Amber has graciously offered to take everyone through a demonstration um, of our RPA and workflow tools. And then lastly, we'll just talk about next steps, uh, some workshops we can do for you uh, if you're interested. And uh, yeah, let's go from there. Uh, next slide, Amber. So what is IBM Cloud Pack for Business Automation? Um, and it kind of ties into the IBM strategy is really it's a comprehensive platform. So what happened a few years ago was we had a lot of siloed products such as FileNet, uh, BPM, and uh, DataCap. There really wasn't cohesion between these products, and it really was just you know point of point of product issues. But we realized after talking to a lot of our customers that they're really looking for more of a platform feel, where they can use all of our products and they work seamlessly together, rather than having to you know make patches to kind of put them together. And uh, it, it just it, they wanted something that was more integrated. Um, so that's kind of where IBM took the strategy was. How do we come up with this platform? Well, that's kind of how Cloud Pack for Business Automation came to be. Uh, we integrated all of the automation uh, tools, so all of the products within the Cloud Pack, uh, so they work really well together and they're all low code. Lastly, if you see the third, the third point, flexible deployment. So talking about running it anywhere, you know, IBM is a hybrid cloud company. We know that there are many cloud options and they're expanding all the time. So how can we get you to run your software wherever you want to run it, uh, whether that be in IBM Cloud, AWS, Azure, or on-premise. Uh, we want to give you the flexibility to run our software anywhere. So next slide, Amber. Okay, and awesome explanation. Uh, what I like to think of it is a, a layered cake, right? You have all these layers and it's your choice to put those layers on and, and, and eat, have a bigger layered cake or, or just use a few of those layers. So as you can see, that's what it is. <laughs> Exactly. Well put. Um, so as you can see from this slide, I really like this, this graphic because it shows you just holistically what we're working with. And you can see kind of if you go top to bottom. So these are client and partner solutions. On the left, everything is low code. Um, we've actually made changes to almost all of our products, uh, including the legacy products that are now more low code options because we really want to democratize the ability for people to automate um, and get in there and get hands on themselves and not make the barrier to entry too high with a lot of products that have in the past in the past been you know pretty sophisticated and complex. Uh, so process mining and modeling that's been really hot right now. We have a lot of interest in that. RPA and digital labor. IBM actually bought an RPA company. Uh, WDG uh, in 2020, so two years ago, and, and that's what Amber will be focusing on later in the presentation. Oper operational intelligence, so how do we make sense of all the data that's coming out of all these products in our automation uh, space? Document processing, so we're talking about actually taking uh, information off documents and doing automatic retrieval uh, of that information off unstructured documents. Workflow, so your business processes. Decision management, so automated decisions based on a set of business rules, uh, and then content services. So how do we store uh, how do we store files and do that in the most efficient way possible? Um, at the bottom, you can kind of see the automation foundation, where we talk a little bit about what you know what's also available uh, to be integrated within these products, and then below all that, Red Hat OpenShift. Uh, obviously, IBM now owns Red Hat, and we've made a big push to make Red Hat as uh, and, and OpenShift specifically as uh, easily accessible to our clients as possible. And then below that just talks about all the different areas where you can actually run um, Cloud Pack for Business Automation. So, yeah. Uh, next slide, Amber. And uh, just to, to add to that with the automation foundation with what you were talking about, Justin. Um, so right here, 
these are like process mining and robotic processing automation of uh, all the automation foundation are things that you can have in, in in any other cloud pack if you have that with you so we have plat platforms aka our cloud pack in data data and ai we have integration um network um, network automation and these all give you the entitlement to use a process mining or rpa to try it out um, think of it something for you works with what you're trying to solve um, and 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 then if you would like you know more of it you can but you do have the ability to try it um, so i'll go to the next slide Oop. there we go Great. Yeah. So as you can see here, it's it's kind of a more detailed uh, view of the last slide, but uh, really goes into what each of these are. And I know I kind of gave a description of each one, so I'm not gonna gonna do it over. But today, you know, in red, we're gonna focus on workflow. So how are we gonna design and manage start to finish workflows and integrating RPA is specifically the use case we're gonna touch on today. So it kind of goes back to the theme of IBM strategy: is how do we make everything integrated and work, you know, seamlessly. Uh, next slide. And also same thing. So as you can see on the left, we, you know, we have a little bit about process mining and then RPA. So using bots to automate tasks, think about entering in, you know, just a quick example, entering in a bunch of uh, information that's mundane into an Excel spreadsheet. Well, now we have the ability to basically automate that with uh, robotics and RPA uh, and you know, essentially you're giving your employees more time to do higher value work. So that's a huge part of it is not having them waste their time on stuff that can be automated. Um, yep. Amber, do you want to have anything else on that? Can we go to the um, next one? Just with the, the RPA, especially with that, you'll see in our use case, you know, we're human, right? We make mistakes. I definitely make mistakes sometimes. Well, Justin's probably better. So maybe he only makes like one mistake, you know, a year, but uh, like our, RPA is really that it's a smart dumb bot, right? You're, you'll see today that um, it, it'll do what you want it to do, but if if the situation's not set up for it, then obviously it, it can't think like, oh, maybe I can go over here and, and do this, right? It has to be a consistent uh, swivel chair task, um, but hey, it, it doesn't make mistakes, so copy and paste mistakes, poof, geez, I, I do that all the time, but um, with RPA taking from one system to the next, for example, like what uh, Justin was saying with Excel sheets, man, that is the cream de la creme. Um, RPA can help you with that, get it done, no mistakes, and really save you on time. So we'll see that later today. Great. So uh, talking about low code applications. The, the main reason for low code applications and no code applications are simply uh, to get more people using the software to make it easier to automate their daily tasks. So we really don't need you to be a computer science scientist like it would be in the olden days um, to, to get in there and start doing things that are going to help uh, make your job easier. So uh, a lot of this can be also done with being able to uh, tackle governance and lifestyle, life cycle management, excuse me. So being able to manage user access and team membership will give you uh, all the ability to kind of uh, show who can use what. And when uh, an employee will sign on to the platform, uh, they'll have specific things they can see and they can't see. So everyone's gonna have a tailored view uh, of their automation platform. So it works best for them. And that's a big point too, is we want people not to get confused since there is a lot going on in there. Uh, but with uh, governance and life cycle management, you can really uh, tailor it to the specific user. Um, also, we're just making things easier. We've taken two of our more complex products and built kind of, I wouldn't say watered down versions of them, but uh, a little bit easier to use for uh, people that aren't doing, you know, super complex business critical tasks, but just want to make their job easier. We've built, excuse me, we've added the ability to, uh, to do that in our, um, Cloud Pack for business automation. Next, let's talk about deployment. And this is probably the number one question that uh, we get. So if you want to jump to the next slide. Uh, it, it's confusing, right? IBM has not been uh, <laughs> known in the past for being the most simple company when it comes to acronyms. But the Cloud Pack for business automation is interesting because it actually 
you know, at the end of the day, you can run it anywhere. It just has cloud in the, the, the name. Uh, but there are two main options when you're going to license with cloud back for business automation. One, you're going to get a single license for all your automation capabilities. So I know in the past, if you're a, a customer of DataCap, you may be using PVUs, which we used to uh, use to do metrics uh, and licensing, or you may be using AUVUs if you're on FileNet and you're counting users. Well, we're moving all of that to what's called VPCs, virtual processing cores. And essentially what that means is we're going to take your deployment report, how you have things running today, whether you be on PVUs or counting users with AUVUs, and we're going to translate that into this common uh, licensing model with virtual processing cores. And that'll give you a good idea of how much capacity you have. So we're moving away from counting users and more into a capacity-based model. Um, secondly, a big part of it is all of this is going to be supported on Red Hat OpenShift container platform. So containerization is a big initiative for IBM across not just CloudPak for business automation, but all of our CloudPaks. And that's something we also want to make it easy for our customers to do. So you will get dual entitlement uh, to OpenShift when you upgrade to the CloudPak. Uh, and then, of course, we don't. that doesn't mean you have to move to containers. Uh, ever. It, it just is a suggestion that you have the ability to, and we're going to work with you to do that. Uh, you can run it, like I mentioned earlier, on any cloud. Uh, you can run it on multiple clouds, hybrid, on-premise. It, it's totally up to you. Um, I know it says cloud pack, but it, nothing has to change. If you're currently a FileNet customer and want to just jump to the cloud pack and see what else is there, you can run it exactly as you are today. Now, on the right, you can see cloud pack for business automation on SaaS, and this is a little bit different. So this is running as a true software as a service off IBM cloud, and it's fully managed by IBM. There are some slight technical dip or technical differences uh, between running it on-prem, and this is actually, you might be familiar with DBA on cloud and FlexPoint. So it's just a little bit different licensing model if you do do the cloud pack for business automation on SaaS. Um, so certainly can get into more, than, more of that and the differences uh, on a different call. Okay, next slide. We can talk a little bit about the components. So what's actually in the cloud pack for business automation? Um, as you can see, you've got your core four, your BAW, which is uh, BPM and then case from FileNet. We packaged it up and made it BAW. Uh, FileNet content manager, of course, uh, operational de decision manager, and then data cap. So those what I would, consider the core four of our cloud pack for business automation. Now, if you look at the different shadings, that just talks about, you know, whether it's uh, meant to be deployed on-prem, whether it's meant to be deployed traditionally or containerized, or if it's cloud native containerized where it just comes in containers. And as you can see, you know, we're, our goal as a company is to make everything uh, containerized. So we want everything to be able to be in containers if you want them, uh, and you can certainly uh, decide for yourself uh, what works best for you, but the option, the idea is to give you the option. Right, it's definitely to give you that flexibility, what works for you and your business um, is really what we're, what we're here to do, what we're here to say, what we're here to do, yep, definitely. So now we're going to go into a little bit more about what we're going to be demoing today and what Amber is going to be demoing. So first, we'll talk a little bit about workflow. I'm going to move to the next slide. So workflow automation from IBM, I'm sure, you know, many of you who have been around for 10, 15 years uh, working with us have known it used to be called uh, BPM. And uh, we thought, you know, since we're, it goes along with the platform theme is we want to take aspects of case and package it together from FileNet. So now it's business automation workflow. The core four pillars of this are intuitive, intelligent, integrated, and flexible. Uh, don't try to say that five times fast, but those are really <laughs> what we're looking to do. Um, make it as business friendly as possible. Like I mentioned, we're trying to get more people to use it. Uh, we want to be able to leverage IBM's AI capabilities since we're trying to infuse that into basically everything in our portfolio. Uh, integrated, so we want to be able to, to pair it with different uh, softwares within the cloud pack, such as RPA, which we'll be showing you today. And then flexible in terms of just the governing model, whether you want to run it on-prem or not, and also if you want to run it in containers, um, totally up to you. But those are kind of the, the core areas. And if you want to go to the next slide, we'll talk a little bit about integration. Yep. And the one thing that I do want to add to that is it, for the people who don't know what 
yeah, what 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 do we mean by case and and BPM? So you know, BPM is your one process from start to finish, very uh, a linear process. Where case is is combining a lot of processes that are interrelated. Um, think of multiple departments. Think of when you call somebody and uh, call on a company and say, "Hey, I want to go to the credit card company versus." Uh, or the credit card department versus something else. You can click two and then boom, head to that different process. So uh, it kind of combines both the simple simplexity and the uh, complexity. <laughs> uh, I, I guess I didn't say that right, but uh, the simpleness and the complex of both of both processes. Thanks. If we want to move to the next slide, mm -hmm. is it oh, not perfect. on the Okay, cool. So, this, yep. uh, so here, just talking about uh, workflow and how it works with tasks, which is RPA, um, you can kind of see we're, we're really looking to automate the tasks uh, at the edge that humans still do manually. I know, you know, for a lot of us that work in tech, you know, our jobs may not be so manual and we may have to do a few things, but, you know, you'd be shocked how many people are still, like Amber mentioned, entering into Excel. Uh, and making mistakes, you know, humans make mistakes. We're not trying to displace these employees. We're really not. We're just trying to let them do higher value tasks and let their get let them get more creative instead of having to do the same thing every day, every day, every day. Um, we can do that for you uh, fairly quickly, so you can work on things that are more interesting and more valuable to the company. Um, yeah, Amber, do you want to add anything to that? Um, no, I think you got it. Yeah, it's just a uh, really making sure that you change from not doing that swivel chair to, to really working on work that can make you as a happier happier employee right and and to kind of really f flourish in your job so um there's benefits <laughs> so next let's do a deep dive into rpa so ibm actually like i mentioned uh, earlier in the call ibm had bought uh, in july of 2020 uh, this company called WDG, which was based out of Brazil, and we had bought it primarily because we wanted to add our own RPA solution into uh, the automation platform. Uh, this is a serious initiative for IBM. I mean, you can clearly, we're putting our money where our mouth is. We're investing in automation, and it's, you know, it's good to see. Uh, we previously partnered with Automation Anywhere, but we found WDG to have uh, significant competitive advantages, uh, and it aligns with our broader vision, like I mentioned. Um, Next slide, please. So, why IBM RPA? Uh, I think the biggest one is going to be reducing the cost of ownership. Uh, this is a huge area where we found with our clients that they're having issues with because we can now run multiple bots on a single virtual host and it saves a lot of money. I mean, we're talking 50% less cost than our competitors for, you know, basically the exact same quality of product. Um, that's something that IBM made a point that we're not trying to be, you know, we bought the company, people expect us to jack up prices and make it really expensive to pay it off. But no, that's, this is really uh, legit when I tell you that it's, it's, it's fairly cheap and it does a really good job of um, doing basically exactly everything you'd need an RPA um, or bots to be doing for you. Definitely, it's definitely a low cost, um, a low cost, but high ROI is, is a really big benefit and, and why not act on it now? I mean, it's very simple to, to set up. You might need a little bit of guidance, but, um, overall it, it really, you benefit from those, from those little bots. <laughs> okay. I think it's time for the demo. So Amber, yes, do you want to take is. it over? I would love to. Well, hi everybody. Um, now we're going to get into storytelling. So I, I do flourish in the storytelling. So this is going to be our use case. Now we're doing a specific use case where it's vendor onboarding. This can be any onboarding. This can be a different process like loans or um, or, or industries like insurance or or um, uh, retail. It's really kind of up to you. We're just focusing on one use case. And we're going to go through two teams. You see the vendor onboarding accountant right at the bottom. And we also see the vendor rep. Um, so what we have currently in the process is, let's say you just had lunch with a uh, vendor and you want to go at them. All right. Well, we have to wait till the lunch is over, get in your car, drive to the office. Could be 30 minutes, could be 45, depending on, <laughs> for me, Dallas traffic. 
Um, and then you go in, you search your vendor up in a, a Windows GUI. So that what we're using is an overall, let's say, universal number for a, a vendor. So that we call it a DUNS number. Um, so we're just searching them, and then we got to put all the invoice data and in, information in there. So we that takes me up to eight minutes. I might get distracted, might talk to a colleague for a bit. I am a chatty Kathy. Um, and then the next we're going to do the vendor onboarding profile. Okay, well, I have to get that ready. Same process, right? And for our windows, um, for our windows GUI, I can't copy and paste from that. So I have to type it by hand. And sometimes I, I mess up with typing, right? And uh, we put it in the web application and then we start the business automation workflow. So the business automation workflow, uh, BAW, I might refer to it as, um, is going to be organizing the teams of, of when a task finally gets into the portal. It's now, um, it'll be set up for the next team, let's say the vendor onboarding, to now check the credit, make sure we're good on that, um, on that vendor, and then set up the billing profile. And then um, from there, continuing on to whatever we need to do to, to onboard them. So overall, we estimate this takes about 22 minutes. Um, these are just estimations, right? Because uh, it's because it, it's a simple demo, but you know it's a good amount of time. And and when you're typing or copying and pasting, it might take longer. Especially you got to check them and etc. So this is what our vendor lookup tool looks like. So talking about that Duns number, which is that universal number up at the top, where I look in and I see okay. We have a um, number, a company, it's Steve. Um, I can't copy and paste from this. From this, I have to actually uh, uh, copy, tech, type everything out. Um, but if I onboard a new employee, they need to figure out how to work this, what it, what it is, and, and it has to be on each person's desktop, right? So it's not always the um, simplest, but you need to have those things happen. So this is kind of happening all before the bot, um, and and we'll we'll see how it is afterwards. Um, so he, here's kind of that lookup tool, and then next is creating that invoice. So we're just using a common web application called Invoicely, um, and the bot what we have and what the human would do was go in and create everything. Make sure you have the passwords, hit save, and then continue on. Um, and, and with the bot, we're going to have the bot go in, or I'll probably get to that in a little bit, but um, this is how we manage users with the person. And, and obviously, you need to train each new user how to use Invoicely, get them a profile, et cetera, and get on. Okay. Now we're going to go into the demo uh, showcase with our, or with our RPA. So let's say, same scenario, I'm at lunch with that vendor and you know what, they're really talkative, they're wanting to do, um, they want to do business with us. Okay, well, since our, our um, product is mobile on my mobile app, I'm going to look up that DUNS number, I'm going to enter it into our, our, our portal for BAW, and I'm going to just kick off that process. So as I'm finishing lunch, what the bot is going to be doing is it's going to search up for the vendor. So it takes 0.5 minutes. It's going to then find the invoice, create it in invoice link, create the, add that information from the search into invoice link and also the vendor profile within our um, uh, business automation workflow portal. And then once I get back from my lunch, which was very filling, I'm going to have the vendor accounting, um, the vendor onboarding accounting person be able to do the credit check and save on time and boom, then we already are at billing the billing profile. So we save a good amount of time because a, I'm not um, no mistakes. I'm I'm not copying and pasting, um, and it's just really focusing on, hey, the bot's going to do all that administrative work. I focus on helping with that vendor, with that customer, um, with that loan, et cetera. Remember, it's, it's bigger than just this use case. And then um, we get to the end where it's already completed and done. So we save a good amount of time on that. Um, so with that, I'm going to start showing the demo. And I'm first going to show how it is kind of going previously of what you see. Uh, before the bot, and then I'm going to take you, usually you don't see the bot going forward, but I'm going to 
show you what the bot does uh, without touching any keyboards or anything. So I'm going to just stop sharing really quickly. I'm going to get out of PowerPoint. And there we go. Okay. Uh, oops. Sorry about that. Hit share and screen two. There we go. Okay. So what you are seeing right now is my portal as the administrator. And by the way, you can um, customize this portal to anything you want. You can search vendors, you can search people, you can customize what you can search for them. But right now this is my portal. Nothing has um, started yet. But I'm going to, as the person coming from lunch, right, because this is before the bot, as the person coming from lunch, I'm going to look up the DUNS number first. Um, so I'm going to first go into my vendor lookup tool. By the way, I just switched over to um, our, our virtual machine that I have that has the bots and everything running. And you'll see that a little bit easy, a little bit later. So I'm going to look in, I believe they have a number, they gave it to me of this. So I'm going to search. Okay, I have found the company that I want to. Kyle is his name. Real great guy. Um, so as you can see, I, I'm trying to. I can't copy and um, I can't copy and paste this. So what I have to do. All right, notes robots is your friend. Good to know. Um, so I have to start my vendor on pro process, right? So it pops up in my portal. I go into my first one. All right, so I have to now fill out this uh, profile. And by the way, you can do it. You can do it any any way that you like. But so I have to fill out my profile. So I have to click back, go okay, A C M E. All right, A C M E. Got it. All right, what's the address? I have to go back here. One two three Main Street. Okay, one two three four Main Street. All right, I think I was different. I have to go back. You get the idea, right? So I have to delete that going forward. Um, so you're going back and forth. We're swiveling to make sure that we get everything. So I'm just going to populate this page. And from there, um, that's just to make it easier for the demo right now. This has his contact information. This has his business numbers. By the way, this can be customized to whatever you want to do. And uh, I'm going to sign off on it. My name is Bob now. And hit submit. So that starts it off, by the way, at the moment, I'm, um, I'm the person that's not that we, uh, I'm the person that's kind of overview of everything. You can control this on who sees what, so you can control on who sees the, um, the, uh, of who sees what in the portal right now, since it's a demo environment, we don't have any securities on who sees on, on restrictions for that. So now we are the onboarding accountant. Remember that's that bottom person. So I see that pops up in my portal and I need to do a, a credit run check. All right, it's 6090, but you know what? Kyle's a great guy. I'm gonna I'm gonna just continue on and approve him anyway, because you know he's really great. He 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 gave me a good vibe at lunch. Um so then it comes back to my portal, which is the vendor onboarding rep. That's the per I'm the person that that had lunch with him. And we can go through billing and payment. Then now these are just examples of things. You can design this however you want. You can put your company logo um, and you can say, okay, this is a test and password test. Please don't share the password, right? Test, hit create account. All right, now we're gonna go into the login tab. That essentially makes a, an account for you. Um, And we're going to log in there. I can click the payments and, but, but, uh, whoops. You, you get the idea. So I'm just going to close out this one. So really that BAW, um, this BAW tool is a really.
great tool in how, okay, what's my team doing? Uh, what is in my queue to, to accomplish? Now, let's say if you're the administrator, uh, before I show you the bot, let's say you're an administrator and you go, okay, well, we want to change this and modify it to be due a different time. Then we can change the due date. Um, I can even assign it to, I can even assign it to another user. I can change the date to be, you know, the 12th instead. Um, we, we have some time. I can do very, very low, right? And, and I can assign it to a different user. So, um, at the moment, I'm just going to assign it there just to save on time. And, um, that now my, my work queue is clean. All right. So now I want to show you what is going to be like with a bot. So I'm going to exit out of this first. And right now I'm bringing up a launcher. This launcher is just a bunch of but buttons that we have created to start an attended, uh, an attended bot. Now with RPA, you can do attended, which is me, the human starts the process, or you can do unattended to where you can schedule it. You can, um, have it be on demand. So, for example, after this demo, you'll see how I clean up my demo as well. Um, we actually have that scheduled every midnight. So, so our stuff doesn't roll over. Um, so what I'm going to do is, and remember what you're going to see is the bot go in. It's going to create an account on it first going to look up the, uh, excuse me. It's 1st going to look up the web. Uh, the Windows GUI, right? So you have that API connection. Then it's going to go to the web browser where you don't have that API connection. We actually connected it to the HTML code that that's there, right? And it's going to add the account, and then from there, it's going um, to pop the the ever, all the information into pre-populate all the information into um, the business automation workflow, and it's going to be ready for me. Um, right after I get back from lunch. So I'm going to start this vendor onboarding process. Um, and by the way, my, my hands are up. I'm not touching anything. The bot is doing its own. So it's looked up the number. And now what you're seeing, I'm not touching anything. It's going into, man, I wish I could type that fast. <laughs> it's now going into a voice lane. We're going to add an account um, for this new vendor. So it's a new client. Um, so right now I slowed down the bot to be human eyes um, uh, seen. Uh, you can do it faster. Uh, let's say your internet is a little bit slower. You can put pauses in there. All right, and it has completed. So what you just saw was it went in, it got the information, and then it took that information and was able to um, type it up into Invoicely right? A web browser and then, um, create that account. So, oh, and then as I move over into, uh, the vendor onboarding hat, right? I just got, I just came back from lunch. I can see that the submission for the customer information is already up in my portal. Oh, this is great. I don't have to do anything. I just have to look. So let me check. Okay. So I see, all right, Kyle. Yep. Great guy. Just had lunch with him. Um, and all right, you got the Dunn's number, et cetera. So I can see my full name. I'm actually gonna put Amber Morgan this time because that is my full name and I'm gonna sign it and then hit submit and continue. So then it's off to the next person, it's off to the next team. So really I, I save time, right? Instead of flipping back and forth from my one screen to the next, or let's say, and thankfully I have two screens, but some people don't have two screens, right? They have one screen, so it takes a little bit longer um we, we're able to to minimize that time for work we're able to get that job done and i can move on to other tasks for my um onboarding for my onboarding team now i want to show you two other aspects with this business automation workflow one is the team performance and i see here let's see what happens because i had everything all right here we go so here I can see what's going on with the team performance. Um, and I can see, okay, vendor on accounting on board, they have one overdue. All right, we gotta we gotta look at that one. Um, we have five on track. All right, that's good. Vendor our boarding rep, they have five on track, nothing at risk. Um our bot never is gonna have anything overdue or or on track, or excuse me, overdue on risk or on track because it 
it gets that done very quickly and on to the next aspect, right? Because it's 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 a buy. It does its one job over and over and over again. And like I said, this is all customizable to what you want to measure of who you want to measure, who gets to see this. So if you have, um, let's say, different from, from the measurements of a team, if you have like, let's say social security numbers, you want to search for, for, for that, then you can um, make that only to certain, certain groups. Now I'm going to go into the process. Now the process is you're going to see a bunch of them. These are actually people from my coworkers who are um, doing tests and whatnot. But um, I know that we had some vendor uh, vendor agreement with Walmart, and I I saw on the performance that it was getting a little bit slower. So I'm going to go to Walmart. I'm just going to look up Walmart. All right, and I see that's actually on time. Um. Granted, you can have anything that you want searchable there for you. It's very uh, customizable. Now, this is something where I would say it's low code. You probably need a little bit. Um, if you if you're a, a have a lot of developing background, you'll probably get it really quickly and and be able to set it up and 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 run with it, right? But it, it's a little low code, so I would say you would need some training um, for setting a little bit of training for setting things up like this. Um, or um, a little bit of guidance, a little bit of guidance there. Um, but I can see if I go to, I can even look up, for example, uh, let's see. Oh, I did his real name. Hold on one second. This is a, oh, there we go. I can look up Andrew. See that he created or this process is going strong. I can click on that. See how this team is going. Might take a minute. There we go. Okay, so I can see that uh, restaurant depot, it's Andrew, lives in Orlando. These are the tasks that are happening. Um, this was assigned to Kyle Dawson. Okay, so that's good to know for my team. Um, me as the administrator, I can go in. If there's any documents that are added, we can see them here. Um, I can go straight to setting up the account profile, which you saw beforehand um, with everything labeled out. Um, and then you can filter activities of what's complete, ready, all. Um, and before, I, I can also edit this to be, you know what, we need to get this done um, actually later. So, and this had to be done you know, a few times and I can make this urgent or, 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 et cetera, or I can reassign it to an, an individual to somebody else. I can reassign it to them and assign because they, they need help. So, um, that's a little bit of what the demo was about. Now, I'm going to bring up the PowerPoint again. Um, if I just, there we go. That's where it is. So, Really, what I walked you through is this process here, and I'll, I'll go back into presenting mode in a moment. So I walked you through this process here of, all right, how do I do this? Well, if it's an APIs or with um, a web application, we can connect to it, right? Um, and it takes a little bit longer to go through this process, whereas vendor onboarding, uh, vendor accounting, and the bot, the process takes quicker. I'm able to enjoy my lunch, lunch the um, and continue on with my work going forward. And we also saw a little bit about what BAW administratively has um, uh, to, uh, excuse me, what BAW has to, to really make it easy to customize, to look at your team performance, um, et cetera. And now this is just a very simple demo, right? But like I said, you can make that to what you want. So, um, Justin, is there anything you want to add from the from the demo or anything that I didn't emphasize <laughs> or compliments? I'm open to that as well. <laughs> I will stick with the latter. I thought it was incredible. Thank you. It was really well done. <laughs> it was it was fun to do. It, it it was a journey to to get that that demo done. Um, all right. So, if we're we have a bit of time if everyone anyone wants to ask any questions um uh, just message them in the chat and and Laura would will respond to them but 
um, really, if you're, you're interested, you want to reach out, what do you do? Well, there's a few things that you can do. We have think coming up and let me tell you, it is a time and a half to go to think. Now we have. A couple of events happening throughout uh, IBM used to have think of one day that you would all come together and descend on a city <laughs> that has somewhat good transportation, somewhat kind of transportation and and we would enjoy and learn with each other and talk and network. Well, uh, we, we kind of split that up a bit. It's not there's 1, it's not all 1 big day there. There's multiple days. Now, the 1st bullet point is the global event that takes on. Uh, May 10th and 11th, uh, we have links. Um, Laura can paste them into the chat when we're done here. But if you want to register for that and still stay in your PJs while you learn about IBM and what they're doing and and kind of some new things that are happening, go for it. It's right there. If you um, are in Dallas or um, let's say there's other places, I think Boston is happening. Um, uh, next week, I believe, Justin, I, I can't remember the dates at the moment. I think it's right around the time of May, May 10th. Yep. Um, I think you're right. Yep. Awesome. <laughs> and, but let's say if, if there's another location that fits with you better, or you, you're in Dallas, man, it's a little dreary today, but if you want to. Come to Dallas to June 21st, reach out to either Laura, I, or Justin, um, I'm acceptable on all email and LinkedIn. Um, uh, and, and we can help you kind of uh, talk about some stuff there and with next is an automation workshop. Now, I'm actually going through this process right now with a couple of clients. It's, it's quite fascinating and, and th this team does really take good care of you. They do a half day workshop where, you know, they talk about what's going on with your processes. Talk about what what's you identify most of all talk about some methodologies because let's think about it automation and processes. It's not just, okay, let's throw a process at it and, and hope it works, right? It's really talking about the, the center of excellence around that. How do you plan? What, what are, what's the process of improving? Um, I always think of the, if anyone knows who, I graduated in engineering management, which is like systems and industrial engineering, but the, um, the Toyota production system, I always kind of think about that. You always have to plan and, and it's continuously evolving, right? That's, I mean, that's tech, that's tech and, and that's automation. So we have more to learn about that link as well. And Laura will post that as well. And lastly, if you want to just know more about fun things, I mean, we have a full website dedicated for automation for all the decisions of automating your decisions. So you have a single source of truth for um, what you saw today with RP RPA, robotic processing automation, um, workflows, et cetera, best practices, what's going on in the world with automation. We have a community here for you. Um, it's, it's online and I find it really informative, right? We're always learning. I'm personally always learning. Um, that's really one of my, my go-to um, go to reads of the day, or at least of the week <laughs> when I have time for it. Um, so that is the things to attend things to do with concerns with automation. Justin, do you have anything to add or. No, I would say it, you know, given that we. You know, said a lot of information today, if you have any follow up questions, please reach out to either myself or Amber. Um, and we'll have your information just. From the recording, but please reach out and we can certainly direct you to the right people or help you ourselves. Yeah, thank you, Justin and Amber. That was so informative. I'm now going to go over some questions in the chat. So if you have unanswered questions, um, please put them in the chat and we'll address them right now. Also, like Justin and Amber said, you can reach out to them. I'll include their emails in the chat and I will also follow up with an email with the recording to all the attendees today. So we do have two questions in the chat right now. Our first one comes from Hugo and let me find it. He said, can we download BAW for IBMers to test it? Um, Hugo, uh, so we do have some stuff for uh, IBM. Um, for customers, there is a trial, right? And you can, you can go on that trial, it's 90 days um, and that's, 
that's really simple to do. I think you'll just have to talk to your, your local sales rep or, hey, even reach out to us for it. Um, for IBMers to test the BAW aspect, I would encourage you, and this is also something, um, this is also something that uh, you customers can do as well. We have a te technology zone that you can go on and, and spin up um, your instance and, and try it out as well. It's not as long as the trial, right? And and it's more um, scripted in the sense, but that's something um, to look at as well, or or product management if you want. Um, Justin, do you have anything to add on that? Yeah, I would say if you want to do a trial or anything, just um, reach out to us and we can even take you through how to set it up or how to get it in the demo zone internally, of course. Mm -hmm. And Hugo, I saw your response about being unmuted. I don't, unfortunately, I set it to like, oh, I think I got you now. Did you, were you able to unmute? I see you. Yes, thank you so okay, much. Great. And, uh, it's, it's faster than faster than typing, so very quickly. Sure. Um, uh, first of all, Amber, great presentation, really, really cool. I was wondering, uh, I have an event that I'm trying to organize with a partner that have a lot of relationships with the uh, national accounts. And they are located in Dallas, and there is one in Austin. I'm planning on doing an event uh, May 19, uh, and I was wondering if you'll be available or if you'll be okay to do this one-on-one uh, -on -one demo. This will be a partner base, and also there could be an opportunity to do it with a with a customer. Uh, do I reach out directly to you, or what is the process? Um. Well, I'm honored that you love the demo that much. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, why don't we take that offline and uh, just Slack me and we can, I don't have my calendar and stuff up right now, but we can definitely coordinate and, and do something there. Excellent. Thank you, Amber. And, uh, mm -hmm. and then, thank you, Laura, for meeting me. Of course. And Ugo brought up a good point for everybody on the call. If you liked what you saw today and you feel like this could be useful in your territory or in your team, Please reach out to if you already know who your brand sell your business automation brand rep is for your territory. Reach out to them, and they can connect you with the right technical resource. If you are unaware of that information, please reach out to me. I'm happy to connect you with the right person. We're a team here, and we can um, figure out the appropriate resource for you in your territory. So, um, like I said, I'll I'll send out a follow up email with um, the recording today, and like, if you have any further questions, you can always message me. We have one more question in the chat that I'm seeing, and this is, says, is there a case study with a client that we have helped them automate vendor onboarding and what is the impact of that? Yeah, um, for case studies and, and just in time and any time here for for case studies, I'm unsure, but there is a blog from the. Um, uh, from the community I, I since talked about, and it's done with some of the higher up management. And it's not only including, and, and anyone can access this, not just IBMers, it's also clients as well. Anyone can access this. So um, I can send over that link if, if, if the person is internal or Laura, we can, I have the link for us so we can send it out. I can add it to the PowerPoint and we can send it out with the video. Um, I, I don't remember quite what the, the impact was it, what it was in the in the article that I read, but it also goes through not only just RPA and workflow, but it also goes through our decisions, right? We have so many decisions. Our our workers have so many things. I mean, I was at the post office the other day and the lady was like, okay, if you want it to go for this far and this fast, the cheapest way is this. And if you want this to go this fast, the cheap, cheapest way is this. I mean, it's all up in her head. And uh, that's where our, our decisions come in. We can we can send over that that link for you um, on 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 that use case, and it's going to be an on on boy um, excuse me employee onboarding, um, but that that's that's one of the examples I'm thinking off the top of my head. Uh, Justin, do you have any any ideas there? So for specific use cases, it'll depend on the industry, of course, and then there's some like vendor onboarding that are uh, you know across the industry, but please reach out to us and we can get you connected to a specialist in the area or, you know, we can do it ourselves. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if you have more specific use cases you're looking for in industries we didn't cover today, you're thinking like, oh, I have this particular customer I need some help with. Again, once I send out that follow-up email with all of the information from today, just reach out to me and I'll connect you with the right resource. I'm happy to help. So I'm not seeing, um, just have, 
from Robin, thank you so much. We're looking forward to having you on more webinars. Um, you know, if you have ideas or questions or use cases that you would like a webinar on, please let us know that as well. And then we can put something together. Um, we are a team. We're looking to have more practice doing these webinars. And so anything that you need, we're happy to, to support that as well. So with that, there are no more questions in the chat. Justin, Amber, do you have anything else before we stop the recording and end the call? Let's see. Uh, yeah, well, thank you everybody for joining. Um, like I said, Justin and I, um, we kind of met earlier this year because, uh, you know, IBM, they they move us around sometimes. And uh, we, we've just enjoyed doing these web this webinar and we'll probably do a few more. Justin is an expert, best in the business, be a business, uh, was it business automation insights and and so we probably will do do that next time um but we'll get it scheduled together with laura like i said we're we're kind of hitting the ground running with these things but we do enjoy them this was fun thank you guys again for your time today and with that we'll end the recording and the call enjoy the rest of your week